my research focuses on innovation and specifically looking at innovation in complex adaptive systems. And the reason why I'm, I'm especially interested in innovation in complex adaptive systems is because I think we often have this view of innovation as some kind of a genius, a Steve Jobs type person who sort of sits down and looks at the competitive environment and then comes up with some brilliant idea that he or she then implements and changes the world. And that, that does happen. But often also what happens is that you, you have an environment, specifically a competitive environment, that's rapidly changing. It's adapting all the time. And it's extremely complex, so it's hard to understand. And so innovation in that context is often more a matter of learning from what we're doing and making appropriate quick adjustments based on our experiences with that. I think if, if sort of Steve Jobs stands at one end of the recent spectrum of innovation in this area, I would put Jeff Bezos on the other side in terms of his ability to generate adaptive innovations based on how he understands the unfolding competitive environment. If you look at Amazon's history, it's a company that has dramatically changed over the course of its history. And, and it's always been maybe that sort of one consistent thread is it's always been very responsive to its customers. But that responsiveness to its customers has pulled it into all kinds of other areas. And it has innovated extensively in, in the process. So, so I'm, I'm fascinated by, by this topic. I think it's extremely important to any large organization or, or even small organization in a competitive environment, but especially important to the US military. I don't like how technology-centric discussion of innovation often is. We, we often make it all about the stuff, you know, oh, the iPhone and, you know, the Xbox and the Mac and who knows what else, right? It's not really about the stuff. It's about the context of use. You can take an amazing object and use it in a totally stupid, banal way. Or you can take an ordinary object and repurpose it and it's incredibly innovative. I, I think, you know, we, when we think about artificial intelligence and automation, we need to start thinking about not just how we fit that into our existing ways of thinking about how we fight, how we prepare forces, but a completely new approach to warfare that is enabled by this technology. Something that I don't think anybody really understands. Like, I don't think there's anybody out there who, who gets it. But in order to develop that idea, we have to be willing to take some risks. We got to experiment. We have to pursue maybe more of the Amazon approach where you have some core idea that drives you to be very open about exploring new applications, new ways for you to succeed and compete. All of these organizations are, I think, going to be disrupted to some extent by innovations that are arriving now. And, and so it's important for us to understand, I think, our own biases regarding how we want to see those things and how we may be wrong. We, we may be right about them. That's the, the other thing. It's like, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and say, hey, your assumptions are wrong. But, but I do think uh, luck favors the prepared mind or something like that is an old saying. Chance favors the prepared mind. And if you've thought about the possibility of something, however surprising it may be, if that thing happens, you're much better prepared to deal with it than if you, you just never thought that it would happen. It's not possible, you know. An aircraft will never sink a battleship, you know. Well, um, if that's what you really believe about the world, then when that thing happens, it's gonna take you a while to recover, right? As opposed to the person who's like, mm, yeah, you know what, I think that's entirely possible, but if that happens, here's how we would fight. I'm interested in innovation, specifically in complex adaptive systems, and and innovations, not just in terms of the, the ways in which you operate, but, but st strategy writ large. You know, what, what constitutes a strategic innovation? I think uh, one thing that I would love for people to try to embrace about the world, a world that is full of complex adaptive systems, is the idea that whatever we do, whatever we're gonna go out there and try to change is not final, okay? It is not a sport. Like the world is not a game. Okay, it never like the the com competition. It never ceases. Y you are always required if if you're trying to achieve some strategic objective, you're always required to put some energy into it. I think in American history, there's this temptation to see war as sort of existing in some range and then 
and then it ceases. Uh, and then there's peace. And we hand out Hershey bars and there's a ticker tape parade and everybody goes home and it's all great. Um, war and peace both require a lot of energy. We, war we, requires a lot of energy to end, okay? But peace requires a lot of energy to maintain. If you ask like the New York Police Department, hey, New York Police Department, did you guys win last year? They, they wouldn't really understand the question. That, that's not what they're trying to do. Like they're trying to essentially maintain a kind of acceptable level of, of public order and safety. I think that's actually the essential role of the military as well. The, the military most of the time is trying to help with that. The US military, especially globally. I mean, if you think about our global force posture, our treaty commitments, East and West, you know, we have, we have significant agreements that commit us to maintaining order and security in Europe and in Asia. And sometimes I think that Americans, we, we really want to solve problems. But I don't think, mo I think most problems in complex adaptive systems aren't susceptible to solution. You know, the, the whole term, like, if you think about public safety and, and law and order, the drug war, why is that a bad term, right? Well, the drug war suggests that you can win. I don't think you can win it. Y you can just actually get like, say, usage rates below a certain level, you know, reduce the flow of illegal narcotics and, and try to reduce the uh, crime that's associated with that. But it's not like you're, you're ever going to say, oh, it's over, we, we won, and, and now we can wrap that up because we're going to move on to something else. It, it's never ending. It is a never ending commitment. Now, that said, kind of going back to the New York Police Department example, if you ask them, hey, did you guys win last year? They wouldn't understand the question. Um, but if you ask them, like, are you guys trying to like prevent or police all crime everywhere at all times? They would say no, because they don't have the resources. And neither does the United States. So when I say, hey, these problems never end, and we're not really trying to solve them so much as manage them, the, the, the add-on is that we also have to make some hard choices about which problems we're really going to try to manage. We don't have the ability as a nation to do it everywhere and at all times. And much of American history in the 20th century and in this current century concerned sort of a, de a broad debate about which problems we're worth dealing with. You know, that's that, that push and pull between isolationism and interventionism. Hey, we need to do something there. No, we don't. You know, that's not our problem, blah, 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 blah. Right. So what constitutes a cause for military intervention? I can't possibly answer that question. I mean, that's a, that's a, complex, uh, that's a complex question. Um, but I do think it's worthwhile, whatever we're, we're deciding, to always remember like, th that we're not so much going for a specific end state as we are for, for establishing kind of an acceptable condition. On War Room, we have a podcast. It's called A Better Peace. I really like that term because I think it, it captures, it's Basil Littleheart who, who came up with that idea. It's like, why do you go to war? You go to war to obtain a better peace.